Hey Gregor Arturo here again, and I wanted to talk to you about the Coriolis effect and its relationship to gravity. So, there, uh, first, let's explain the Coriolis effect. So, we're looking at this planet right here, and there's a really good picture I have on my, um, my, uh, what's the, the VX space, um, the, the Wiki Vortex page we create. I don't even remember its name. It's been a while, so I've been on it. I just have a lot of information up on there. But the, the wiki uh, VBM page, um, I think it's vortexspace.org is what it is. I think that's it. Um, I have a picture where it shows the um, all these little vortices on the northern hemisphere spinning counterclockwise, and the southern hemisphere are spinning clockwise. Um, a lot of people have had sometimes a hard time understanding how this effect is created. At the same time, how it relates to magnetism and how there's a north magnetic polarity and a south magnetic polarity, and there's a null zone in between the two, um, which people usually call a diamond neck effect. Um, so, let's, uh, north. Which way is north in this room? North is like this way, and south is like that way. Okay, and so, um, at the equator, the equator is moving fastest, rotating around the Earth, while the poles are moving the slowest. Technically, if you're staying on the um, geographic, it, yeah, the geographic pole of rotation, um, you're technically just spinning. You're not moving around in terms of linear sense at all. And so, if north is this way, and that is a faster um, or is a slower rate of rotation, well south is a faster rate of rotation than next to me. You can imagine these two lines of force, but one is going faster than the other. You have a differential between these rotational speeds. Because you have a differential, you create, um, actually I think I just went, nope, I'm going counterclockwise. It's been counterclockwise. So I'm working with that rotation. Now, uh, David Sarita, who's a friend of mine in Sedona, did this really cool video a while back, 20 minute video, um, Aaron interviewing, uh, I can't think of his name at the moment, but it was the week he was leaving Lockheed Martin Scout Works, and he shows um, an aspect of spinning this, I think it was called a lathe, um, on a table. And when it spinned it counterclockwise, because he was in the northern hemisphere, it would spin for a while and stop. But when he spun it clockwise, it would slow down faster, and then it would reverse and start to go the other direction. Now this is understanding of how opposing energies and, and same energies work together. Um, when he's spying counterclockwise, you're just creating work. You're having two forces work in the same direction, and they add up together, and they move forward. People understand that and usually work toward being, oh, it's worked together in the same energies in the same direction. But when you use two opposing energies um, against each other, such as when you spin the lathe clockwise, um, the clock the Coriolis effect is slowing that down. Um, um, or will you speed it up? And once you speed it up, it starts to slow it down. But regardless, if there wasn't the Coriolis effect, it'd have to slow down anyway due to friction, and it creates a deceleration. Just like, and that deceleration has increased acceleration or increased deceleration, how you ever you want to phrase it from the Coriolis effect. This also relates to how a jewel thief on the collapsing magnetic field, you can get excess power out of it. And you can get um, more power on the collapsing form of the energy instead of the building up form. Um, and so you could say implosion versus explosion. And so, um, in terms of sacred geometry, there's linear and cyclical aspects of our reality. Now, um, one thing our reality is dominated by is masculine thought. It's linear. And there's so many linear aspects in our reality, including how gravity has become a predominant thing. And that gravity uh, is a linear force. And then it's supposedly related to mass. To me, mass is, an, is, an a, is a, a multiplier of the cause in terms of creating the effect. It is not thus the cause of the uh, phenomena itself. And so, the, the the linear aspect, the masculine, is the dominant being a white hole. You see the white hole, it's hard to see the black hole. And so, the feminine energy, the cyclical energy, is less obvious, and that is the Coriolis effect. And so, 
what we're actually experiencing, gravity, is the linear aspect of the centripetal force of the Earth. And the Coriolis effect is a cyclical aspect of, um, of the, the centripetal force. When you combine the cyclical with the linear aspect together, you have a spiraling form of energy. And that gravity is really a spiraling form of electromagnetic energy. Um, and then there's centripetal force and centrifugal force. Now, if we apply hollow earth theory, in that the crust is a compressional point of energy around a vacuum within inside the earth, um, that the compression of energy creates a gravitic node in the center of our crust, which is, you'd say, where the centripetal force and centrifugal force, an inward spiral centrif cent centrifugal, and an outward spiral, or no, the outward spiral is centrifugal, and an inward spiral is centripetal. Forces meet to create a, a, a cyclical form of energy, a purely cyclical form of energy, um, which is torque. And the torque is what our, causes our planet to rotate. I mean, well, that is rotation. Um, they're synonymous. Uh, so the thing is, now let's correlate this with magnetism. And that magnetism has a north, north magnetic polarity and a south magnetic polarity with a null zone in between. So if the Earth's magnetic field stops, does the Earth stop rotating, um, aka as in a pole shift? And I'd have to say yes, absolutely. If the pole shift, then you'd have an acceleration of the planet to start to reverse in the other direction. And uh, okay, um, and it, from in terms of ancient mythology. I'd um, equate that to as being three days for the planet to start to accelerate in the other direction. Um, so when I was talking about uh, hollow Earth theory, that means on the inside of the Earth, if you were standing on the crust, what you would call gravity would be an aspect of centrifugal force as you're being th uh, thrown outwards. And so the highest densities are located at the gravitic node point in between the crust, and the densities get less from that, uh, moving out to our, atmos uh, our atmosphere. And so that would mean there would be a less dense, dense atmosphere as you move away from the crust on the inside of the Earth. Um, a really good way to see this in nature, as I already talked about in my last video, is an electron shell. And look how an electron shell is set up. Now, if it was just being affected by centrifugal force, you would have the densest amount of electrons always on the outer ring. But that's not the case. Um, uh, what we have is you, you'll have two electrons in the first ring, and then eight electrons, and then ten electrons, and then eight electrons, and then one. You'll, you'll have a build-up and, and a gradual build-down. As I said, with the solar system, with Jupiter, being in the middle, the, the most den density, um, it's, it's the same with the Earth. Uh, you can, if you can really understand what's going on in an atom, you can understand what's going on with our solar system. They're all interrelated. Um, as above, so below. Thoth could have said it better. So, uh, the only thing I didn't say, I was just thinking if there's anything I missed, is when you go across the equator that that those vectors would flip-flop, and that's what causes the, the rotation to change. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say. So it was a little bit calmer than my last one. I had a lot of energy get out of that in that video. I hadn't done a video for a while. And Riff Shaman, I'm going to try to make more videos. Uh, I've been really, really busy. I'm going to be documenting my work, and uh, we'll be putting together... Uh, some of the people I'm working with, like Trevor Kagan, another Vortex mathematician, putting together um, a synopsis to show people, specifically in the permaculture movement, how to apply these concepts um, in the style of Victor Schauberger to promote sustainable living. Righteous. So, adios everyone, and uh, enjoy your world, and enjoy gravity for what it is, spirals and more spirals. And so I will talk to you later. Ciao.